there welcome to QA box let's test in this video we'll talk about how to perform client side performance testing using google lighthouse and cypress sounds exciting and you guessed it right it is a plugin which makes client side performance testing possible using cypress the first tool that most software engineers probably associate with front end also known as client side performance testing is google lighthouse but why test for performance it has been proven by numerous studies that our attention span has decreased over time. When we want information, we want it fast and any delays in receiving this information is truly frustrating. Slow websites have direct impact on business revenues. Slow websites frustrate users and it is highly likely that they would switch to competitors if the website that they are using has poor speed. Now in a nutshell you can say A. Slow website has direct impact on the business revenue. Number two, users don't like slow websites. Now, here are some great references to these points. In here, you're talking about users don't like slow websites and slow websites are silent killer for business. And in here, we are talking about the revenue that will lose if we have a slower website i'll post the link of both these pages in the description of this video now when we talk about performance testing it is typically divided into two areas client side and server side a very common approach in server side testing is to do load testing as we all know in server side testing we perform bulk of concurrent transactions simulating multiple users and verify if the server can handle that load. Load testing is essential since this gives us insight on how our applications behave under heavy load conditions. Now, tooling available in this section are JMeter, KSX, or GitLink to name a few. Now, we find bugs, right? As a tester, we find bugs and we report the same to the developers. Now, try to see the other side of the story, it means what happens after you raise those defects. And especially when we are talking about performance defect and you know how do we go about fixing those server side issues to boost our ap application performance now if you know these things right you you don't need to find this you can do the targeted testing now we have to understand that well one size fits all doesn't work everywhere each situation is different and hence deserves a very specific treatment having said that there are some best practices and guidelines guys we should try to adhere to so to name few number one poorly optimized databases and now we can fix these particular issues by adding indexes tuning sql queries managing the growth of our data and etc number two shared resources and virtual machines at times a lot of other applications are using your application under test resources meaning Many other applications are hosted on the same server your application the test is hosted. We can fix this by hosting our application onto a dedicated infrastructure and that will surely boost the app performance. Number three is poor load distribution. We typically have multiple servers running to take on client requests. You know, you feel like you know there's a client server and you might assume that there is only one server. No, that is not the case, right? We distribute our load. So we always have multiple servers taking on those client requests. Now we can fix the, this issue. Now what could be the issue? So there are multiple servers, yeah, right? But most of the requests, let's say, are hitting a particular server, all right? So the load is not distributed. That's the problem that I'm telling here. So we can fix this by implementing appropriate load balancing strategies and distribute network traffic to different servers and we use softwares like load balancers to accomplish that number four traffic spikes and no opportunity to scale up all right there is a sale coming up right so everybody is hitting that website and now the website is no longer available right? we all might have witnessed this now to fix this issue we can decide to switch to cloud environment and be then able to scale up our infrastructure horizontally or vertically or both at peak times or whenever required number five default configurations okay great we got a great web server right but hey we have not tuned that we are just using it in its default configuration great our application functionality is 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 as we 
want it to be but what about the performance now the thing is systems must be properly tuned while default configurations make it easy to get new components up and running they are not always appropriate for your web applications in a live production environment number six dns firewall and network connectivity issues now using dns monitoring safeguards to pinpoint problems at hand also revise switches check VLAN tags and distribute tasks between servers so if you are making a request to a server and the resolution of his domain is taking a lot of time of course i mean you would see some slowness right and at times if the dns is not at all resolved you would get 404 all right it's very important we uh, run our test on dns as well and when you when you open your developers toolbar in the network section you know you see the waterfall model in there there is one section which talks about how long it took to identify that particular dns you know just an extra tip number seven third party service issue very important to choose third party services smartly since a slow third party service drags the overall experience down okay and the list goes on but these are some of the you know best practices and guidelines just if you can remember great now that was about server now the thing is however even if the response time for different requests are fast enough at times the client side is not optimized and contributes to an increase in overall response time especially if it is downloading a lot of javascript css phones images now javascript right so you got to download that first then that gets compiled passed, and finally executed this takes some time all right this takes some time same is the case with images right so you are not uh sizing your images properly right so you, you, your browser has to do that on your behalf which is definitely going to slow down uh, you know your your website performance and user is going to feel the pain what you can do is okay so you can say okay uh, so i create different uh, sizes of images one for mobile one for you know uh, desktop and so on right and same is the case with uh, you know uh, phones like you know you you download the phones from a cdn server and that is taking some time all right usually that is not the case with cdn but let's say i mean you have hosted your own phones and then it is taking time so there are some css right for example there is a property called a swap so you know what happens is you always provide some uh, preferred font and then you always say okay here is the fallback plan so if these fonts uh, are not available then go for this then why not what we can do we can say okay initially just swap it right so unless we have those phones downloaded let's go with the default one all right and then once those phones are available just swap those again all right so these are the few things that that we can definitely do now the aim of client side performance testing is to test how fast a single user can see the web responses instantly therefore single user performance testing is as important as doing load testing on the back end so it's time to now talk about google lighthouse our tool for doing automated client side performance testing guys it is an open source tool used for auditing the quality and performance of a website it's a great choice due to its versatility and ability to measure different areas such as web performance accessibility search engine optimization progressive web app and best practices hey there are these five categories guys now you can run lighthouse in different modes you can do it from the dev tools all right you have the extension as well you can run it from the command line you also have this ui from where you just have to enter in uh, the URL which you want to test or you run your audits against and the last one is your you know node module so you give lighthouse a URL as you could see you just have to provide in a URL and it runs a series of audits against that particular page and then it generates a report on how well the page did from there use the failing audits as indicators on how to improve the page each audit has a reference document explaining why the audit is important as well as how to fix it now to get started with lighthouse you really don't need additional technical skills the easiest way to get started is simply open up your chrome browser visit a website of your choice open up the developers toolbar and click the lighthouse tab let's see an example so they are going to work on espn it contains a lot of images 
obviously the performance would not be what you can expect it is going to be slow and that's why i picked this particular example now i've already uh, run that but let me show you how you can go about it so you just open your developers toolbar and there's a tab called as lighthouse and in here these are the five different categories right remember these are categories now what is this configuration so what you can do from here you can set to emulate your application on either mobile or desktops okay uh, what you can also do is you can go to network and in here you have the throttling now you can decide to check your application performance on fast 3g slow 3g and offline so if you have the pro pro progressive web app features enabled means us there's a there's a there's a service called a service worker uh, which ensure that you know if you're viewing the application on the mobile right uh, and there's no network then it behaves in a specific way so these are the few things that you can do all right let's come back to our topic which is lighthouse all right so you select all these and all you have to do is just click on this generate report right if that's that simple now i've already done that and when you do so you get something like this guys something like this these are the five categories all right we see in here okay these are the five different categories and i decided to run this on the mobile device okay now the thing is there's a warning in here all right which says that chrome extension negatively affected this page load performance try auditing the page in incognito mode or from a chrome profile without extension the page loaded too slowly to finish within the time limit results may be incomplete now the thing is that we have to understand is right so when when we automate this particular uh, page and run our audit against this right so in there also you can pass in these different uh, categories you can pass in the different configurations so these options are important all right so what i've done is i have opened this in the incognito mode and now you could clearly see the difference but let us do one thing first so all i now do is click on generate report and now you see audit has been started now the application is loaded inside moto g4 and this is the resolution all right guys so this is how they do it okay now let us open our report so let us look at this report out of these these five categories all right performance is the most important one there are six important performance metrics okay which are important to understand as usual all right to me the most important one is first contentful page in fact i'll say there are two most important one in my opinion time to interactive and first contentful page now let's understand these first so first contentful paint measures how long it takes for the browser to render the first piece of dom content after a user navigates to your page now why this is important so you enter in the url right and you see a white page or a gray page right you, you don't see anything being painted on the screen as a user you, you may feel like okay maybe this is not working all right so that's first contentful page now time to interactive all right now you see something being painted on the screen and you tap your screen right you interact with the application nothing happens why the thing is could be could be right that you i mentioned that you download the javascript you compile it you parse it and then you execute it so that process is still happening behind the scene you're clicking it nothing is happening because when you click it right some kind of event has been fired but the event is not executing because the you know, browser is still doing work on that javascript all right so you feel like okay nothing is working guys nothing is working others are also important and there is a weight associated with each of these so if you click on this in here all right you would see the definition of each of these now the great thing is what you can also do is besides this performance right uh, it also provides you a calculator so i go to this particular uh, site now and in here i would like to yeah let me open this this calculator once uh, guys let us open this let us get some sense of it now you could see the current performance is this 
and these are the different metrics which one do you want to work on and here are the different weights all right so lcp largest contentful paint means the largest dom element is being painted or the image so lcp measures how long it takes for the browser to render the largest piece of dom content it could be image or a text block after a user navigates to your page all right so in this particular case we see that maximum benefit lies in here so if i start reducing this time and you could see as the time is reducing the performance is increasing all right so if i bring it under 1500 you see the performance will increase to 31 and you can play with this particular calculator all right guys now let's come back to this report all right okay great so in here you see the snapshot been taken when this website was getting emulated on the mobile device all right now underneath that you have the opportunity section and this suggestion can help your page load faster they don't directly affect the performance score and we'll, we'll revisit this point all right so it says remove unused javascript so what happens is over a period of time you know we keep on adding more and more and more javascript all right but the thing is on a particular page we are only using a part of the javascript all right now it's time guys to start splitting that javascript into smaller file and we have to be careful how how, how many splits we want to perform and there are a lot of tools available like you know if you are using a webpack right while building your application so webpack offers you uh, the the i guess it's it's bundle management or something right so which checks for what is the appropriate size of your bundle and you know how, how to split it up eliminate vendor blocking resources I mean, there are some resources which say hey i am important right let me uh, complete first and then it's your turn right so we we have to identify those those uh, uh, blocking resources and and there are some uh, nice things being done in the browser like you know uh, pre-order and there are some those uh, pre-flags which you can use uh, to further enhance it right you, you find them you can find them on the internet read more about it remove same is the case with remove unused uh, properly sized images right then uh, to diagnose it i mean this provides you more information about the performance of your application again these numbers don't directly affect the performance score you, you can read more about it again guys there are certain things which are done great in here and they comes under the past audit right they have minified the css they have minified the javascript oh, minification is what like you know you take out those white spaces from your css and javascript file guys right this is how we do that uh server images are in next generation format so you could see that image format like jpg 2000 jpeg xr you know, they have a better com uh, compression compared to png and jpg right enable text compression so whatever text that we have on the on the html page can we compress that why uh, yes they have already done that and they have used http2 smartly HTTP offers many benefits over this, including binary headers and multiplexing, right? It's a two way communication happening between client and server. So we are not building up unnecessary TCP connection for every request. TCP connections are slow. They are, TCP is great, but the, those connections are slow, right? So if wherever you can use or there's a need of multiplexing means clients and uh, requests to the server in the same connection, server is sending back uh, the response, right? Client again sends the request, so again send by this. Go for HTTP2. Now, the thing is, you know, uh, these GIF files, right, which are animated, okay, better is to go for the video formats. And now there are different video formats MPG and WebM. I guess WebM is for, you know, when you are accessing this website from the mobile, guys, go for WebM, otherwise, go for MPG4, and they are solutions which take care of it okay i know where you are coming from hey i can read your user agent in which there is all that information you are coming from okay i can i can serve you with this particular format okay all right great accessibility guys again i'll skip this part why let's come down and see x version okay great so they are using x core guys we have already covered that in this video series right so i showed you how you can integrate cypress with x core right so that part is already done okay great then what's next best practices against security and all like links to cross origin destinations are unsafe I have to do something about these right and so on then you have seo search engine optimization google like 
to send the users to the fast websites right if your website is not fast if you, if, if you can't search your website on on google right so but you see 92 it's great the best right server knows espn is great right google knows that oh you want to go to espn that's a great website go there yeah progressive web app yeah so this is not going to work in the offline mode guys as you could see it does not register service oh that's about that's about it you can read, read more about it right but let's let's move on and spend enough time on this why was it important ah there's a reason why i explain all that raising work is important but it is equally important to be in a position to explain your defects to other parties involved within your project i hope you all agree to me on that so point here is you run the audit download the report or raise the bugs and attach the report yeah is your job done then guys no your job isn't done yet rather it's just started i would say it's just 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 started this is an opportunity for you to make name for yourself you get this report and now please open a healthy dialogue with your development team and try to explain them these things if they are not already aware of yeah i talked about the report guys yeah this is a page how are you going to download the report oh, that simple you see these three dots click on that save as html great you can save this report as an html you share this html report uh, another important thing please note that results you get might be different when you run it against the same page multiple times don't get fixated by how different these numbers are as the tests are run on different conditions based on what network and cpu throttling are used it's better to focus on what improvements you and your team can work on for example Google Lighthouse provide a set of suggestions on how to speed up your website and how much estimated savings you can get by implementing these suggestions. I showed you guys opportunities. Look at the opportunities. Yeah. And I also encourage you to read more about scoring guide and audit documentation. So let me close this. I think we are done with this incognito mode. So what do I have to read? Ah, this is the link guys you open this let let us open this quickly as well I go in here it talks about why your score fluctuates internet traffic routing testing on different devices browser extension that inject JavaScript antivirus software blah 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 how the performance score is weighted we have already seen that we have already seen this calculator uh this weight as well how metric scores are determined it's very important the scoring distribution is a long normal distribution derived from the performance metrics of a real website performance data on http archive so you can consider http archive as a data center which has got thousands of machines and which are constantly monitoring the performance of top hundred thousands websites and your website is then compared against the standard or the benchmark that we you know build from those hundreds and thousands of great websites yeah great all right so this was all manual yeah so we open the site open the lighthouse click on that button set our configuration mobile desktop blah 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 pick the categories all men guys all men but here's the great news google lighthouse yeah if you want to run lighthouse in an automated fashion we can run it guys we can guys it is so awesome that we can run lighthouse audit directly in our cypress generated e to e test suite so wait is over it's time to extend cypress e to e test to also accommodate google lighthouse audits excited let's go and nail it down so what is in our toolkit Cypress, we would use it for functional automation testing and Lighthouse, which would be used to run various audits against any web page of your application under test, be it public or requiring authentication, meaning hidden behind the authentication. But here comes the question how can we audit web pages secure behind authentication? Ah, answer is simple, right? Cypress would take care of authentication part and expose secure web pages to be audited by Lighthouse. So here comes our plugin, Cypress-Audit. 
This plugin lets you integrate Lighthouse score straight from your Cypress test. It's an NPM package, guys. Cypress hyphen audit. This is the page. This is the GitHub link. You can open that. Now, what is this? This is an example repository to showcase how you can use Cypress hyphen audit to easily integrate Lighthouse command into your Cypress test. You just want to download this project, download it in your terminal, run npm install. Time to start the setup part. So, you'll find all the information in here, but I've extracted all this from here, and you can find that here as well. Step number one install the plugin, right? You can save this as a dev dependency or Dive dependency choice is yours. Go and run this in your terminal. Step number two configure Lighthouse. Now, what do we need to do in this configuration? All right, this is the code. Yes, right. So, you got to take it and put it into your plugin index or JS like I've already done. So, I open my plugin index or JS, guys. Here is it. All right. So give me a second. I just want to first comment this out because I will start from the basics. So what do we have to do? We require this. This is what we are seeing in there, even in the documentation. All right. So we paste that code in here. But what is this code? Now, Cypress Audit uses Lighthouse CLI under the hood. And if you have used Lighthouse CLI already, if not, don't worry, don't worry. It opens up a Chrome browser and runs the audit. Similarly, when you run your Cypress test, it also launches the Chrome browser by default. When you use the Visual Test Runner, because you want to run Lighthouse inside the same browser as Cypress rather than opening a new one, we need to write some code in plugin index.js file is. And this is that code. All right, this is that code. Since Cypress reacts to various browser events before we launch the browser, we are simply going to pass the launch option object, which contain information of how the browser is launched to the prepare audit function, which we have imported from this module. All right, so you need to write this line and then you need to import this, guys. guys that's simple. This way, Cypress Audit will know information about our browser. Then we create a new task called Lighthouse. Here is my task with the name Lighthouse to invoke the Lighthouse process. This is needed because Lighthouse CLI is a Node.js backend process. So, in order for us to use this within our Cypress test, we need to wrap it as a task. Yeah. What is step number three? Inform Cypress of Lighthouse command. Got to add this following line in the Cypress support command.js. I've already done that. Simple enough, right? All right. So we're done with the setting, guys. Time to write the test case. Now, let's open our test case file. So, we're going to execute first test case from this first file. So what are we doing in here? Visit any web page you want by calling cy.novisit. Now, what is my base URL? So in Cypress or JSON, you know, I have provided in the base URL, which is nothing like google.go.in. Okay. Then to actually run the audit, we need to call cy.lighthouse afterwards. That's simple, right? Great. Now a few things before we move on. By default, Cypress Audit will run the test based on a score of 100 for every metrics. Hmm. Kindly also note that this plugin only supports a you know, set of browsers. Let's see how that is being configured. Uh -uh. So, uh, let me walk you through this as well. So, we have somewhere Cypress Audit, guys. Cypress Audit. And we have SRC, we have performances, and under that we have command handler.js. If I open this, let's quickly understand this. Hey, 
these are the default thresholds so guys what you can also do is you can set up this threshold in your uh, cypress.json all right because this particular module is basically reading the file from there okay so if you provide uh, the the threshold from your cypress.json this would be overwritten and same way if you provide your you know uh, this threshold from your test case itself which you can do which you are going to see next then also this would be overwritten but if you don't provide right then it is going to run against these all right that's what i mentioned and these are your valid browsers guys now let's understand if you try to run it on firefox you would get this message firefox is not supported scripting your test case okay sorry yeah next you could see it is reading from cypress.config lighthouse yeah okay great now next thing it looks like you have not set threshold yet so if you do not provide the threshold from your test cases or from your cycles or json it says hey it looks like you have not set threshold yet the test will be based on 100 score for every matrix mm -hmm. okay thank you so much cy.log uh you would see that in the test runner command log okay great if you provide everything hmm, it will run its test okay and it accept url threshold options and config okay great means in the in the cy dot lighthouse command i can pass in these three things these are optional url is coming from uh, there is an integration between cypress and lighthouse don't need to worry about this but these are optional and you can pass these okay great all right let's move on now audit is being done you get the result back and you get the error and the result all right now the thing is i'll show you one error which i'm getting constantly because you know when i run my test case second time this error object is null i didn't uh, you know uh, look much into that but if you guys can you know uh, fix it or you know how to fix it please mention that in the comment section down below so when you get the error right it logs to the console and it says threshold has been crossed right so this is one important file so let me close this okay now this one more important thing that we have to understand in the light of cli or here as well in cypress right by default all audits are run on mobile device say that again by default all audits are run on mobile devices also the threshold can be modified and you are free to customize which metrics you want to pick you can also pass in a custom configuration to update the metric score so guys with that snippet here is the snippet you can pass in the threshold i talked about uh, now configuration guys if you don't pass in anything like i said if you don't pass this particular thing it would run right in this particular case we are not passing anything which means this test case would emulate uh the, the mobile device you know you'd see that you know this this google.co.in is being loaded inside a mobile browser just like you saw on the uh espn thing yeah but in here i mentioned form factor is desktop screen emulation disabled right so what did you do so when we i just want to run one more you see in here is the setting right this is the configuration uh, this is how you're going to control it that simple okay and then you're going to pass those things in here. great so we have full control over this all right guys now i don't we run these okay so let us run our first test case i'm going to click on this so test case is started and it is going to open up a new tab you could see that the application is being opened in the mobile view all right and you also see that message i was referring to okay and we get this result great guys now let us execute our second test case wherein we are controlling certain thresholds and also the audits so let us skip this and execute this only okay and this time it should this site should work inside the desktop mode okay so let me save this and run this 
desktop desktop yes now it is open in the desktop mode great guys all right so we can open up in both mobile and desktop modes and again we'll see some results in here which is which is great and now it's also talk about that interactive record and all great great we also talked about the login right functionality like you know uh, not login basically how to audit the pages which are secured behind authentication hmm. i've written a different test case for that what are we doing in here guys we are opening the react redux app i'm logging into that that simple right so this is my next page when i'm checking for this particular element new post all right and you know we have talked about this so the emulation is disabled in here and we are going to launch that in the desktop mode great everything is okay enough so what do we need to do click on this second one yeah let's see what will happen now will we be able to audit the page hidden behind authentication in this case i'm calling that as the home page we first get the login page we got the login page we are going to enter in the valid credential click on the sign in button hopefully this will launch the home page which is the next page and then we'll start our audit hey we are on the next page let's see what do we see in here now yeah we see the home page here is the new post guys so yeah you see that's so great right now you can automate your client side performance testing in cypress only great hmm. we get the results back great great right now what is the next thing that we have to do yeah. you won't call your developers and show your screen hey <laughs> something is wrong right you're not going to do that so you'll say okay hey you know automation is fine but i i still uh, i still prefer to you know be able to share this kind of report all right yeah in one case i'll cover the second case so let's handle this concern first how to generate this html we do it step by step guys we do it step by step so let's go back to index.js so in here i'll tell you three different ways one we have already covered so three more three more basically and these are specifically on the report problem that we just talked about right so lighthouse cli can you generate html report yeah you can do that but when you use it as a plugin uh, unfortunately you can only generate json okay but that's great that's great in a way that you know you can you can use it as per your requirement okay now what do we have to do what are our different options one is you just print that raw lighthouse report to the console ah not very helpful not very helpful i'm not in for that yeah next one what do we have so in the next one we are saying save the audits and category score in separate json hmm. what are those categories what are those audits okay Let's open this documentation, guys. Uh, and in here, you would have this docs and open that. Uh, you will find this lighthouse.md file. Yeah, great. Now scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down. Here is your categories, right? Now you can map it, right? You can map it with this UI. Here is that UI. Yeah, in here. Yeah. You have these categories, guys. Yes. All right, and what else do we have? Let's see. Let's see, guys. Here are the audits. Okay. So you your website gets scores against categories and against these audits, right? Yeah. So and these are the only important things. Yeah. These are important when you want to keep track of your application performance over time on these criteria. Over time. Not just one time, all right. So, what do we do? So, there are two solutions one time thing and over time. Okay, so we are starting with over time. So, what do we have to do? Okay, 
Uh, and there is one more concern in here, which is like, you know, how am I going to share this with developers, right? So we are going to now focus on this particular problem. So I'll take you there. Point number three, save the audit and category score in separate JSON files. The same logic is used. So guys, whatever you're seeing in here, the same logic is used by this plugin internally. You know, I just fetch it from there. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. So we have Cypress Audit SRC. Let us see that. Where, are, where is that? And then we have this helper.js. In this helper.js, right? We are computing categories, right? Guys, like this. And then we are computing the audits. Oh, I just grabbed that, right? Okay. So what are we doing? Let me comment this, uncomment this, sorry. I always use that word interchangeably. Yeah, that's wrong, guys. I'm uncommenting this. So what I'm doing? So this is the same code. All right. And I'm storing that into an object. And all I'm now doing is, right, guys, I'll show you. So if you store this whole report in the JSON format, you would get something like this. Okay. And in this report, you have this LHR and under that you have audits and categories. But now the thing is, I said over time, which means that every time you run your report, you have to give your report a unique name. You can't overwrite the, the, the older reports, right? Now, how can I give the unique name, guys? I requested URL and the fetch time. Yeah, use that. All right, use that. Append these two things to your file name, but there is a problem. When you create a file name, there are certain characters which are not allowed forward slashes and there are many more all right so i have done something in here i am just escaping these things okay with nothing all right so now when you run this you would see these reports all right so let me collapse this and you would see reports like this so you see audit hyphen name the url but i have stripped out all those unwanted characters or problematic characters or I'll say and in here you just see the dates what about the time I ship that out as well but guys you can do that right you could see I have splitted that so there's a T in that fetch time and I just want anything before that all right but you can keep the whole thing right that's fine up to you you should rather and same way and then finally, I'm storing that into this file, right? I'm doing the same with the other part as well. So let me comment the other part as well for the categories, guys. Yes. And why not we delete all this? Okay. Okay. So let us save this. And let me now show you the problem I was talking about. So, guys, this was successful the first time. Let me run this again. Let's see what will happen. This thing cannot destructure property error of object null as it is null. Yeah, this was the error I was talking about. Let me close this. What is the solution? This is how I do that. When you run that in your CI CD pipeline, hopefully there will not be a problem because you won't run your same test case again. So, uh, first test case is a shorter one. So, let us execute uh, this test case only. All right. So, let us click on the first test case file. So it is going to run in the desktop mode. That's fine. Yeah, I just want to show you the reporting part now. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yes, we're getting there. Oh yes, it's done. Let's look at the files now, guys. We have the files. Now, how are you going to use these files? We'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a while. Okay, we'll come to that in a while. But you click on that. You see the result. You click on this, you see the score against those different categories. Right? Great. Amazing. Now, what else do I have? So, let us come in this. 
these files are great i mean they, they contains the score that you're looking for but the thing is you know it does not contain the opportunities and the diagnostic information right so one time thing is you take that report go to your developer and say hey here are the opportunities the diagnostic that will help you in fixing certain things and what are you going to do you go for this particular solution guys in here all i'm doing is i'm just using the same thing right uh okay oh there was one more ugly thing in here right i was storing that at the root of the project now what i've done is i've said okay uh look out for this directory at the root of the project perf reports if it exists great do nothing if it doesn't exist create one and then i'm using the same thing lighthouse report the lhr requested url and i'm replacing i seen pretty much same thing guys and then i'm writing the whole thing right into that file all right so let me open up uh the perf reports folder we have this in here why not we delete this but let us look at some of the reports right so when you generate this you will get something like this all right so let me just delete this okay see everything works great so let me save it and we know that if we run it again this will fail let's not waste time this video is already long enough let's run this Yeah, it is working, but we are concerned about the report. So let us quickly show us the report, Cypress. Yeah, okay, finally it's done. And guys, do we see the perf report folder? Yes, and do we see the report as well? Uh, it's a long report. Visual Studio will scream at us. That's fine, but we have the full report now. Now, what do you have to do? Control A, Control C, copy this whole code. I'm going to show you something now, guys. Let us go back to our documentation to the same GitHub repository that I have created. Open this last link. Come in here. Click anywhere, right? Um, I'm clicking outside this dotted box, rectangular box, and I'm just pasting that. Same thing now, guys. You see, yeah, and you can export it, right? You can you can share this report with developers. Great, isn't that great? But now the most important thing is, guys, in the in this report we are collecting we are collecting data. We are collecting data. So it is important to understand that there are two type of data: lab data and field or wild data. So lab data is Performance data collected within a controlled environment with predefined device and network settings. This offer reproducible results and debugging capabilities to help identify, isolate, and fix performance issues. So we have talked about the pros as well. Now, what are the cons of lab data? Might not capture real-world bottlenecks. Cannot correlate against real-world page KPIs. Next one is your field data, also called as real user monitoring or RUM, guys. Mm -hmm. So field data is performance data collected from real page loads your users are experiencing in the wild. Pros, you now know, but what are the cons? So restricted set of metrics, limited debugging capabilities. So we should do field testing, collect data, debug issues in the lab testing, roll out the bill, containing the fixes into production and access if we see the performance gains in there as well yeah so now the thing is get the data you understand from the, the performance or the application over time now to achieve that you know we need to keep storing this audit data uh, also the, the category data and generate over time performance graphs you can talk to your development team and build a dashboard you know where you can show your application performance on different parameters over time but please ensure you, you allocate budget for building this uh, dashboard since this will take some time and effort but you know it would pay back in future eventually if it is agreed right like 
you get the developers to build that right how can you contribute you can push this json into the database uh, maybe as a thing json or what you can also do is you can take it to the next level you can pass this json and populate respective tables let's say every day in every two hours like you can you can decide on the frequency of it right so if you don't get an approval hey it's it's so costly right uh, we don't have budget for building the dashboard what else can we do guys you can show that into excel file right and generate graphs from there this will give your management good insight on client side performance of your application over time and i have covered how to work with databases and excels and node chairs in my node chairs basic playlist so you can refer to those having said that this is a complex json and you need to build the logic to parse it okay so i hope you you like this